titler doesn't really look as much fun or as interesting as titles and texts. Titles and texts have got this amazing bunch of presets that do all kinds of impossible things. Whereas the prototype titler has empty, centered, and these other different versions that don't seem particularly interesting to us. But in actual fact, the prototype titler offers you more options and is more powerful than titles and text. It just takes a bit of getting used to. Its layout is different, its interface is different, it doesn't look the same, doesn't work the same, but it is extremely powerful. And we're just going to have a very brief look at it. And I'm going to drag down the empty version onto my timeline and it opens up in its own box. Okay, so we've got our own controls here, but there is nothing in it. I do have the presets, so I can cl click the presets and I can choose if I want one of the other ones. But the reason that this is done is it allows you to place the text wherever you want to place it. So if I were to click down here, it drops the sample text in there. And now I'm available to edit it. Notice it says text edit mode, click here or press escape to exit. So now that's selected, I can put this as Sony Vegas Pro. Okay, that'll do for my titles. Now, I can select all of that, make sure it's all selected, and I can actually start to play around with the different font families. So I can go from Arial, and I can go down and choose any of these other ones, and actually, if you just hover over them, you can see that it instantly updates them, and you can see which they look like. So I'm just going to go to the bottom, pull down some more, Let's just go with uh, that one there. Okay. Now I've got the font size and I can drag that up to any size I like. Notice that it's much bigger, that when it says eight, it's massively bigger than the screen. Okay, so it's not like ordinary font sizing that you would get in previous versions. It seems to be a lot bigger, but it's obviously a, a proportional scale. And then we've got the font family. Now this has only got italics as an option, so I can italicize it, but it's also got font weight, which is where your bold comes in. So it's got extra light, light, medium, and you can go from bold, extra bold, extra heavy bold, okay? So you've got all sorts of different options that you wouldn't normally have. So you've got a lot of variation to how you can actually make it look. You can slant it. So I'm going to take it off italics at the moment, just take it back to normal. And I can actually choose to slant it one way or the other. So that's what we would often refer to as a faux italics, a false italics. Okay, and we can align it near, far, or center, okay? And then the last one I'll show you is, is custom kerning. You can actually kern letters. So if I go between the G and the A there, click there, and I actually play with the kerning. I can actually kern individual letters so that they fit or I can create a slightly more custom look. So kerning allows me to be able to create these slightly more interesting looks by playing with kerning. I'm going to go with the standard kerning, but kerning, if you are a font person, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so, so those are just some of the basics, but look, we've got two other tabs, and this is just text creation. We've got styles, so we've got the fill color. What color do you actually want the fill to be? So you can change it entirely. So I'm going to say I want it to be sort of more of a, uh, a blue color. Okay, so my fill color, but that's not affected anything because I had nothing selected. So I need to select it, then go in and change the fill color to the appropriate color that I want it to be, and I'm actually changing it live. So it must be selected and stroke color. So if I actually want a stroke, I perhaps want to work, go with a white stroke. So I'm going to take everything to 255, 255, 255, which creates white stroke. And I can't see anything until, of course, I start to play with the stroke width. And then I can pull the stroke out to whatever width I want it to be. And then, of course, I can choose whether I want the stroke under the fill or over the fill. So at the moment it's under the fill, but you can go over the top of the fill, which makes it look a little bit bigger. It basically is the fill going to cut the stroke in half. So you can see half of it. If I go under again, the fill is on top and you'll just see the, the, the stroke that goes outside from the fill, which gives us a sort of a finer look in my opinion. You can add a background, you can add a strike through, which is sometimes referred to as a glint or something similar, where you can have a strike through going all the way through it. So if I put strike through on, you've got that kind of strike through. You can make it thick. And if you make it white, again, by going to full versions on all of these, if I just make it white, 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 and white. Okay, click away. Sometimes you can get a glint. It's not particularly good. Um, it's not my favorite, but you can certainly use strike throughs. I'm not going to bother with that. And of course, you can underline your text, which I, I hardly ever use. I honestly don't think that it looks very good underlining text on video. 
Okay, so it's outside of the range. I've got open type options. I'm not going to go through those. There's not enough time, but there are some open type options for the appropriate open types. We can zoom in and zoom out by just clicking and dragging in here. And we can move things around by clicking and dragging here. So if we want to see different parts of the screen, just click and drag, click, hold and drag, and you can move things around. And if you do do any animation, notice you've got the play and the play from start and the pause and the stop options here. So we've got all of these options to be able to see things. But we haven't even hit escape or clicked up here. So I'm going to click here. And now I'm in the animation mode. Now notice that the animation button here is different to what we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing clocks. Now we've got a toggle animation item. Okay, so for example, we can animate rotation. I could click animate rotation. It's going to give me a lane, if you like, down here. And I can actually animate rotation. So I can go forward in time. Here's my playhead. Click forward in time. And I can change rotation a little bit. And you can see that I've got an item here. And it rotates between the two. Okay. Now, this is the rotation point, the anchor point. So if I pull that up here and I now go between the two, you're going to see a totally different rotation. So you can just click and drag around that anchor point to wherever you want it to be. And at the moment, we've put it at custom because I've changed it, but you can center it so it's centered to where that point is, or you can change it to near, far, top, center, whatever you want to do. But custom is when you simply grab hold of it and say, I want it over here so that it's going to rotate around a different place. Now, I've got the rotation sorted out. You can see it's rotating around there. But notice, if I want to, I can change the intensity of that rotation by clicking and dragging these points in the timeline. And if I want to create another point, I just double click on the line and I can go the other, other way. So I can go one way with this and then it's going to go back the other way. And you can play on this line and change the animation simply by clicking and dragging. OK, so it's quite a powerful approach to animation. Now, I'm not going to go through all the different bits and pieces, but clearly you can offset things X and Y. This is why I didn't mind it was created slightly over here, because I knew I could offset its X and Y. I can play with its scale. I can play with its shear. OK, so we can shear the item in both X and Y. Now, it's shearing from, note, the anchor point. So if I take the anchor point right back to roughly in the middle, about there, and now I do the shear, it's going to look slightly different because it's shearing from the middle of the item. OK, so where you have that anchor point is really important. Now I can also apply effects. Actually, let's just um, reset some of these, shall we? So let's uh, OK, so we've reset those. I'm going to go back to effects. Now I've got opacity, which of course I can animate so I can make it completely transparent or whatever. I've also got gradient fill, and notice I've got more than one type. So if I click gradient fill, I get this line which allows me to change how the gradient works. Okay, so I've got white to this sort of this uh, pinky sandy color, but if I click on the color, I can change it. So let's make it obvious by taking it right up to, to say, green. So I'm going to drag this slider right up to green and make it quite an intense green so you can actually see it. There we go. So that's done. And now I can change it. So I want it to go from white one end to green the other end. Or I want it to go from white at the top there you go, to green at the bottom. So you can change how the gradient looks by simply playing with this item to create a far different look. And notice that you can actually save presets and create presets. So if I like what I've done, I can save to my collection and call it something I want to do. So I could call it a green fill. I'm not going to bother. But I also have here loaded presets. So I can say there is another preset. Let's go to soft blue and... Double click soft blue to apply it, and there's a soft blue, and I can change how that gradient works as well. But that's blue to blue, so really I don't like that one. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make it all white again by dragging that all the way up to 100% white, and then creating one at the second end here, selecting that one, and taking that one to blue. Now, if I click in the middle, I'm going to X this off. If I click in the middle, double click I can actually create something completely different so I'm going to drag these up and I'm actually going to create a red one so I've now got three points if I click again and make this one purple I've got four points okay so I've got four points on my gradient which I can pull together so if I pull this one and I drag it close to this one 
you'll see that I can create very sharp contrast between them. So if I just pull this down so you can see the full range. Okay, so I've got white through the purple, orange. Okay, so you can see that you've got the whole range here. So you can actually play with them. You can make them much short, sharper or much stronger depending on how you want them to work. So you've not just got two. You could create as many as you want to change this gradient to create some exceptional text. Now, of course, you've got blur options, you've got glow options, you've got drop shadow options, and you can work through in a similar way to create all of these bits and different bits and pieces. What I want to get onto, sorry this is taking such a long time, is this last one here, which is layout options. Now, layout options allows me to do vertical orientation if I wish, which I don't, but also I can change the tracking, which we've seen before. We can play with tracking. We've done that elsewhere. Double click, line spacing, fine. But look at the selection option. Again, notice this is animatable and it is going by character. If I click the end and drag it, I can make the text disappear off. So if I start at that point and I was to click selection and I was to go forward a little bit further and I was to pull it back, you'll see that I've actually created an animation. So if I go between the two, it's rotating as well, which I apologize for, but it's also popping on and off the screen. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the rotation just by clicking the mute button there. So you'll see that it's actually coming on and off the screen. So I'm making it pop on the screen, or you can write it one way or the other, simply by playing with this selection one. You can also make it fade, or you can just have it pop on and off. So it's fading the selection. If I turn off fade, when it comes on and off, you'll see that it literally pops on letter by letter individual letters okay but fade in my opinion looks a little bit better now the last thing to show you is this one here where it says path I'm going to click path and it gives me a path and notice I can change the position on the path so if I move it I can make it zoom along a path okay and I can change how that path looks by clicking on any one of these points and you'll see I've got what's called a Bezier handle and I can make it straighter and I can make it shorter or longer and it will change the text accordingly but also if you double click on the path you will create a new point and you can actually pull that point out to create and change the path you can also grab the point and move it to a different place and you can create custom paths for your text to fly along and you can animate them by using the position on path so that it's going to start off screen and then come on screen and zoom along and at the end of it I went a bit fast there but if at the end of it if I just show you you'll see that it carries on at the same direction that the end of your path goes on so it's just going to zoom off screen the other way so you can have an incredibly interesting set of uh, tools to create really dynamic text simply by using the pro type titler I know titler is a funny name but there you go this is a, an effect which is really powerful and works really well. The wrap around simply means that the text will continue to wrap around as opposed to going off and coming on. So I would advise not to use wrap around, otherwise it will just carry on going and carry on going. Whereas if you want it to start off screen and finish off screen, you don't want it to wrap around. So that's now created. I can just X off and then when I actually go on here, you can see there it is. I haven't actually animated it, but there it is ready to go. And if I want to go back in and change it, go back in, select the item and go. So that is the ProType Titler, the most powerful, I think, Titler that you've got inside of Sony Vegas Pro. And something that allows you to do things that you simply can't do with titles and text. But have a play with it, get used to it, spend a bit of time learning it because you won't be disappointed when you have the skills to be able to do some amazing text inside Sony Vegas Pro. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you